A lot of people have been asking me for makeup tutorials and I have to tell you I'm a little apprehensive because I feel woefully unqualified to do a makeup tutorial. Yeah, I've had professional makeup put on my face for 25 years, but that doesn't mean I know what I'm doing. I know that I am a little miss impatient and I just like to slap the stuff on and get out the door. So that's kind of what I'm going to show you, slapping the stuff on and getting out the door. I have a regular old fashioned triangle sponge and I have it moistened. I know you see a lot of people using these beauty blenders, uh, which seem like they're really cool. But let me tell you that in my home, I have a thief. I have somebody who likes to steal anything that is mine. My remote control, my reading glasses, all my makeup brushes and sponges. So, no, okay. <laughs> so, ooh, a little fur on my nose. So I'm not gonna be investing 20 bucks in something that's gonna become a cat toy. So I just stick with the old fashioned. I'm gonna put on a little bit of primer. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish. I use the light formula because my skin tends to be a little bit on the oily side. Now I use my pre-moistened wrung out sponge to just get a nice primed base. I do already have moisturizer on. I use Oil of Olay Regenerous line. Product information is all on my website, uniquemonique.com. Okay, so you can see, nature has decided that I am barely out of my teens, leaving me lots of little spots, yay. So we are going to cover those up. This is my favorite foundation that I have been using for many years, and as you can see, it is time for me to go foundation shopping and get some more. So pretty soon I'll have a review of a new foundation for you, but this is my favorite, also Smashbox. It's their high definition and I use the fair most of the time. Uh, sometimes in summer I get all the way up to light. Wow, yeah, I've got one in me tan. I'd have been born to a different family. So we're gonna just put that right onto the pre-moistened sponge. And there are a couple different ways you can put your foundation on. You can spread it or you can stipple it and just sort of press it on. You're gonna get more coverage stippling it. So let me just sort of like spread that around. I'm just sort of gonna dance that across the skin. Just get a nice even coverage. By the way, if you don't have a lighted makeup mirror, you really should get one. They are awesome especially with the magnifying lens. Helps you see stuff you never really wanted to see, but really comes in handy for getting rid of the occasional hag hair. You girls know what I'm talking about. Okay, so where I want a little bit more coverage, I'm gonna just sort of press that around and give me a little bit heavier coverage right in here around the nose, chin. Basically, this area tends to be a little florid. Okay, now we have a nice even coat. Blend, 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 blend. You can never blend enough. Now we're going to get rid of flaws as best we can. This is truly an amazing concealer. I first started using amazing concealer, yikes, about, I'd say 10 years ago. It's been a long time and I have tried a number of different shades. I'm going with the medium golden. I find the medium golden blends very well. Uh, for a while there, I was thinking, oh, I need to get lighter concealers because they'll cover better, but they ended up basically giving me you know, sort of raccoon eyes. So we're gonna take this and go around here in any of my little spots. And we'll get around the eyes just a little bit. 
that. I'm not gonna do too much around the eyes. I'll show you why in a moment. So we just wanna blend that in a little bit. And once again, I like to do all of this with my sponge. A lot of makeup tutorials that you see these young girls doing, they are doing the heavy contour. I'm not doing that. I'm 50 years old. I ain't got time for that. In 25 years of being on camera professionally, never once has a makeup artist painted stripes on my face and then blended them all in. So that seems like a really cool way to do makeup, but no, I'm not doing that. Way too much work. Okay, let's do something about these dark circles. I have had dark circles my entire life. It has nothing to do with lack of sleep. I think it's, uh, I don't know, I, I, I blame the French heritage. Anyway, this is actual professional movie makeup. It is Ben Nye, and this is Orange Highlight One. This is going old school. This is very thick and very heavy. So if you tend to have some heavy lines that makeup settles in, what I would recommend instead of the Ben Nye is to go with the NYX, and this is the Dark Circle Concealer Corrector. This is the Fair. Um, obviously I'm very pale, so I go with Fair on everything. If you've got actual color to your skin, you might go with a little darker tone, but this is nice because it's got an orange base to it, and that orange base really covers up the blue that most of us have under our eyes. So once again, I'm gonna go in with my concealer brush. You can see this has been well loved. The top barely has any pieces to it anymore. I'm gonna paint. And this is actually just a teensy bit heavier than I usually do because I want it to be able to be seen from camera. So I'd basically paint that a little bit right there. And now, just like you've seen in those other tutorials, we're gonna just blend that with a, a little light stippling. Just sort of tap, 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 tap. What is nice about the Beauty Blender is that egg-shaped tip. You can really get into that spot right there, which is a little tough with these. And if I didn't have a thief in my home, I would probably invest in one of those, or two, or three. But as long as this guy is gonna be stealing them, I'm not gonna spend the money. Cheap! I'm cheap, I can say it. Frugal. Okay, so that gets rid of the dark circles. Now we're gonna set everything. Now I have a couple of different types of powder that I use, and I will explain. For real life, when I am just, you know, running errands, going to an audition, whatever, well, usually not an audition, because they'll put me on camera for that. I like Neutrogena Shine Control. It's a rice powder base. It's very light. It gives me nice, mattifying without being real heavy and uh, you know it's inexpensive and it just really does the job for me now for on camera I'm gonna go with the elf high definition powder you don't want to use this too much if you're going to be under a, like a flash photography because it has a white tone to it that can bounce back at the cameras and I love the finish that you get when you use the puff that comes with it but it is really hard to keep a puff like that sterile. So I do recommend using a brush. So I get the powder on the brush, and here's what makeup artists have taught me. Go upside down like this, tap, 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 tap. All that powder sort of drops down into the brush. So now the brush is loaded with powder. Dance that across. I tend to be oily, so I need more powder than probably most women of my age. Most women my age will prefer not to use as much powder, but I'm pumping out oil still. 
There we go. A little heavy, but that'll there we go. Brush that away. That'll keep me shine free for quite some time. Okay, let's get a little color on the face now. I have used my blush brush for so many years that the handle fell off. I gotta get myself in and buy new brushes one of these days. But as long as it works, I keep using it. This is a NARS blush. It's a blush and a contouring combo. And I think the color of blush is called Orgasm. And I will blush right there. It's a nice peachy pink that has just a little bit of shimmer to it. Circles right on the apples of the cheeks, just to give us a little flush of color. Now, I have found that for me, the contour, it just ends up looking dirty, so I just don't do the contouring thing. However, what I will use this for is I'm gonna use it instead of eyeshadow. I'm just going to tap that, tap that off, and just go right in, just along the crease, just to give that a little depth. And then I just bring it in a little bit right on the edge there. Same on the other side. Crease. This eye is a little bit lazier than this eye. It always tends to be a little heavier lidded. I wish I could go to a plastic surgeon and just get an eye job on one eye, but uh, yeah, I don't think they do that. So I like to come up just a little bit higher on that eye than I do on this eye because that creates the illusion of a little bit more depth. Once again, most important thing you can do with your makeup is blend. So I'm gonna take a soft, clean brush, just sort of push that out. So I'm gonna blend it and soften it. Eyebrows. I bought myself a gray eyebrow pencil. don't recommend the gray unless yeah I mean I'm, I guess on certain people would work but I still think a blonde or a brown a taupe is a softer prettier look with gray hair than actually going with the gray eyebrow pencil I think the gray eyebrow pencil might work if your natural hair color before you went gray was black so you've got a true salt and pepper a true steel color on your head then you could try the gray I am going to go with, yikes, tried and true, Maybelline. We're gonna brush everything up with a spoolie brush. Frankly, I love the uh, disposable mascara wands. Those are great little spoolie brushes. You know who stole all of mine. Now, the eyebrow shape, you wanna start here. So you wanna basically take starts right there, ends right there. You want your arch, your nose, you want to take that up to there. So right in there, that's, that's your target zone. Nice sharp pencil. You know, this is a little tough for me because uh, for shooting this for you, I can't really get as close as I do in my own life. I'm just gonna cheat and pull this up, see if you can see that. Tiny little strokes. So some days some days that is all I do. Now for you, I'm going to show you a little bit of a more filled in finished brow. For this, I'm using an angle brush. I did not spend a lot of money on these brushes. I bought these brushes 
at the art department at the uh, hobby store. Uh, just a bunch of little cheapy brushes. Because I'm cheap. Again. Anyway, just using eyeshadow. I'm using a nice taupey eyeshadow to just give a more solid, finished look on that brow. Just to fill that in. See the difference there? How that really gives it a lot more definition. Not too dark. Always err on the side of a little bit lighter than you think you should, or you end up with those John, Joan Crawford eyebrows. I don't know why, but this eye, I always kind of start on the outside rather than the inside. Funny how we get in this weird habit. I have drawn my eyebrows the same way for so many years. When I decorate a pumpkin for Halloween and I do the eyebrows on them, they look just like mine. Habit! And that's the eyebrows. I love liquid eyeliner. I adore the wonderful 1940s or 50s cat eye. I just can't do it anymore. I can't see well enough. Um, yeah, when I have a special occasion and I want to really do that look, I will do it. But for every day, it's just way more work than I want to do. So I just go with an eye pencil. I don't even know what this is. It's worn down so far. But it is a soft brown. It is just a very soft brown. It has a teensy bit of sparkle to it. I'm just going to run that right along the lash line. Now because my vision is not what it used to be, different angle brush, and I will just Give that a little smudge, soften that line. A little bit up and out on the corners. Ooh, messed that up right there. I'll clean up. Here is my absolute favorite makeup trick. I'm taking a black or a dark blue pencil. And I'm going to line right under here, this part. It's different. So we're gonna get right in underneath the lashes. See the difference in how much definition? It really makes the white pop. It makes the eye color just look, jumps right out at you, but it's soft. Whereas if I line the inside here, I get a very harsh look. I love that look when I'm going out to a club at night, but it is a very strong look that you don't want for every day. And this is just a nice subtle way subtle way to really make your eyes pop without looking like you have a ton of makeup on. Most women curl their eyelashes. Sometimes I curl my eyelashes. I just don't care that much. My mascara. They tell you when you're fair like me to go with a brown because it's softer and it's prettier. Screw that. I want black, I want the blackest black, I want the carbon black, and I go for L'Oreal Voluminous because it's got a lot of oomph to it. Just 
start at the bottom. Zigzags, great way to fully cover the lashes. This is not a high glamour makeup that I'm doing. Sometime I'll do that. Obviously it's my first makeup tutorial. I'm keeping it fairly simple. This is sort of a combination of on camera makeup that I do for you and my everyday makeup. I don't often put mascara on the bottom lashes. It just, I find that I have, I'm sorry, my, my allergies are just going nuts lately. Springtime, yay. And now lips. Now the fun part, lips. I like kissing. So I like to wear a lipstick that doesn't really come off. I'm a big fan of lip stains. Now lip stains do exactly that. They stain your lips that way when they wear off, you're still left with some color, right? If you're gonna be doing kissing or eating. Now my basic color is this one. This is a May, May Revlon. No, this is Revlon, Revlon Color Burst just using dime store stuff. Revlon Color Burst, this is number 001, and I find this gives me a nice basic lip color. So this is my everyday lipstick. Now sometimes you want to pump it up a little bit. They have many different shades but I find that the bright colors can tend to get a little too bright. So I don't wanna end up with it wearing away and having like neon pink or neon orange on my lips. So I always use that soft pink as my base. And then if I wanna skew it a little more to the orange, I'll add the orange color. If I wanna skew it pink, put the pink. If I wanna skew it red. And then I have a couple of light ones because they don't really have a tremendous selection of colors. So I find that blending gives me the colors that I want. So for today, I'm gonna go with a little pinker. And if that color needs to be softened a little bit, I'll take one of these lighter ones. And now I have a soft, bright lipstick that's gonna last all through dinner. Sure, I'll need to reapply it after dinner if I wanna have that real finished look, but I don't have to. I mean, it's gonna still have color on my lips, so I'm not gonna suddenly, at the end of a meal, be left with blank, pale, undefined lips. They won't be completely finished, but they'll still have a little something to them, and isn't that all you want? So that is my basic makeup tutorial. Uh, we both survived, <laughs> and I promise I'm gonna get better. I hope you have a great day. Please subscribe to my videos and check out my website, uniquemonique.com, for all the information on all of these products and links where you can get them. You have a great day.